Welcome to Hope City. If you are joining us for the very first time, thank you so much for coming to hang out with us. Can we welcome our Katy campus online right now? They're watching Katy location. We love you. Also, our online location, our online peeps are watching right now as well. Can we give them a hand? Come on, make them feel at home. Beautiful. Also, you know me. I love to honor our pastors because I, I believe if honor is in you, it comes out of you. Can we honor pastors Jeremy and Jennifer Foster for leading so strong in this season? Again, if this is your first time, thanks for coming to hang out with us today. And if you are a part of the Hope City family, I'm telling y'all, we are doing some damage to the kingdom of darkness, and we are expanding territory. We are reaching more people. We are romancing more people to Jesus. We are getting in the way of more people's storms. We're seeing more signs, wonders, and miracles. Somebody should shout. Somebody should clap. And I can't wait for what God has for us in 2021, because 2020, all right, it's been one for the books. If I have not had the privilege of meeting you yet, my name is Daniel Groves, and I have the privilege of serving here as the teaching pastor at Hope City and we're fired up for this week. I know Jeremiah already mentioned it. Pastor Jeremy will be in the house this week for our Christmas at Hope City experience. I believe the times will be up on the screen. Y'all need to show up. Wednesday or Thursday, it's gonna be next level, three worship experiences. If you've never been a part of one of our Christmas services before, you do not wanna miss it. Be a bringer, invite some people, mask up and show up, amen. It's gonna be amazing. And then next weekend, say next weekend, super important, do not show up at this building because there will be nobody here. We are doing a special online-only experience so that everybody can spend time with their families after Christmas. So wake up, get a cup of coffee, keep your Door of the Explorer Snuggie on, and let's watch together online. And I believe the message next week on hope is going to catapult us into 21. Y'all excited about where God is taking us and taking you and taking your family? Thank you for your overwhelming enthusiasm. Do y'all have expectation? Come on, for where, there it is, that's better. Last announcement, and then we're going to jump into the word today. January 3rd. Say January 3rd. Pastor Jeremy is kicking off a brand new series called Do Over. So here's the, here's the reality. We can't go back and change this year, but we can have a do over. So January 3rd, be in the building, be a bringer, watch online. It's going to be next level as we kick off Do Over January 3rd. So last week, we kicked off Hope for the Holidays Week 1. How many of y'all were blessed by last week in Amazing? We talked about how God is with us, God will rescue us, and how God will restore us. We took off some things, we laid it at the feet of God, and we replaced it, Isaiah 61.3, with a garment of praise. And this week, we are in week number two of Hope for the Holidays, and we're going to be talking about peace. How many of y'all need peace? More than ever, we need peace. Let's pray, and then we're going to jump in. Father, thank you again for the opportunity to be in your presence. Thank you, God, that we came. We showed up with expectation. Give us a mind that's, that, that understands. Give, give us a heart that's prepared and ready to receive. And God, we position ourselves today not as spectators but as learners so that we can continue to grow into who you've called us to become. In Jesus' name, come on, somebody say a. Man. So week two, we're going to talk about peace. Your boy, if you have never heard me preach before, uh, the real pastor will be back this week. Um, but the, I love acronyms. I'm big into acronyms. And I found this really cool acronym for the word peace. And we're going to throw it up on the screen. Peace is placing expectation and confidence eternally. See, peace sustains us when we recognize that all of this, this life, finances, family, the climate, the pressure of all of this is back on God, does not wear and weigh and should not be carried by us. All of it should be carried by the Lord. It should not be on us. Our responsibility is this, to simply draw near to him. I mentioned this last week in James 4, 8. The Bible says, draw near to God, and what will he do? He will draw near to us. I've said this so many times that God's not a forcer. He won't force himself on your life. He won't force himself into your situation, but if you'll make room, he will fill every time. When you need peace, he'll fill every time. When you need joy, he'll fill every time. You need perseverance and fight. You need courage and boldness. Whatever you need when you need it, if you make room, he will fill every time. Again, we are supposed to draw near to him and obey him, shape our character around his will, and then he will take care of everything else. Peace is placing expectation and confidence eternally. See, an eternal mindset in our humanity, a lot of times we can only focus on what we see here on 
this earth, but an eternal mindset. An eternal mindset relinquishes control so that God can be God and we don't have to fail at trying to be. Where are my, uh, where's all my fixers at? Like, like you, you're like, where's all the people that like to be in control? Come on, you're like, hey, so we're gonna drive? Who's gonna drive? You're gonna drive? No, I'm gonna drive, toss me the keys. It's my car, give me the keys. <laughs> See, I, I struggle with that a little bit. I'm kind of a fixer. And the truth is, every time in my life that I was struggling in the area of peace, every time it was because I got in the way. How many of you guys have experienced that? When you get in the way and you compartmentalize and try to fix it on your own, when God's like, hey, I, I, I'm big enough and strong enough to handle that. I, I'm big enough and strong enough to take care of that. So many times we get in the way. The Bible actually says in John chapter three, verse 30, he must become greater and I must become less. See, so many times in my life, I try to fix everything and handle everything and navigate everything in my own strength. And I'm telling you, there's no peace in those moments. But if you will let him become greater and you'll become less, there's freedom and there's wholeness and there's completeness in your life. And you'll experience true, genuine peace that only comes from Jesus. Here's what Jesus says in John 14, verse 27. This is a gift. This is awesome. This isn't like a white elephant party where they're like, Hey, here's your gift. You're like, I got it. And then the person across the room is like, I'm actually gonna take that from you. You know, I can't stay. I'm not a big fan of those. I'm just like, don't invite me to any of those. I'm gonna keep it and I'm gonna run out of the building. I'm gonna run. But this is what Jesus said. He's given us a gift here. John 14, 27. Peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give you. This is a gift. I do not give to you as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Jesus made it crystal clear that this type of genuine, true peace comes from him, not from the world. This isn't the kind of peace you can Google. You can't purchase this type of peace. Now, with that said, there are temporary moments of peace that we experience here on earth. There's temporary moments that, 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 that maybe you finished up a to-do list. You got a little bit of peace? Come on. You, you, you took care of all the emails. You deleted everything you needed to delete. Come on, there's a little bit of peace, right? You, you maybe got really uh, intentional about your money this year and you said, I'm gonna pay off a bunch of credit card debt and that brought a lot of peace thanks to Dave Ramsey's. <laughs> well, not your leader. All right. <laughs> Dave Ramsey's, take it easy. But no, 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 Th that'll give you some peace, right? I read this story the other day and, um, and uh, there was a dad who came home and he noticed that his wife had been super stressed and he said, hey, babe, this night is on me. I've got your back. And she was like, okay, what's that mean? He goes, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make food for the kids. It'll be on the table. I'm gonna get, brush their teeth and everything. And, and you can literally go, I'm gonna turn on a bubble bath for you. Come on, somebody. Like this is, some of you wives are like, amen. Look at your husband, be like, amen. So he said, I got your back. He set it all up. Water was running. And she took a deep breath and said, I haven't had this in a long time. I'm grateful. Thank you so much. And he went out and, and he threw some DiGiorno pizzas, frozen pizza dads, in the old oven, and they were done, and he got them on the table, and he's yelling for the kids, come on, kids, and then he got distracted by the football game. And he lost 25 minutes and didn't even realize it. And he turned and looked at the table, and the pizza was gone. And the kids were nowhere to be found. Some of y'all know where this is going. The mom got ready, she walked in the bathroom. Just the thought of this peace-filled night, was just like, wow, my husband really... That doesn't mean I don't have to deal with those kids. <laughs> See, some of you moms, you know that once you get the kids tucked in and you go and hide somewhere in the house, that's when you get peace. Some of your moms are like, where's all the moms at? Some of y'all are like, yeah, that's, what, that's the peace Jesus was just talking about. <laughs> I, they get in bed, I tuck them in, I hide, that's peace. <laughs> well, anyways, pizza's gone, kid's gone, the dad walks in the bathroom. All three kids are in the bubble bath with all their clothes on, eating pizza, and mom's like this. And dad says, oh, I didn't know we were all gonna eat pizza in here with you. Come on, dads, we could do better than that. <laughs> Temporary, peace-filled moments. And as funny as that is, the truth is, how many of you guys have lived where you've had moments, like flickering, fleeting moments of peace? Come on, wave at me. And Jesus never called us to have moments of peace. For those of you who don't know, I actually started in music years ago. I was a worship pastor and still write and I produce. And so I'm a musician. And, and some of y'all are like, why chocolate sings? I knew that. I knew that. 
But I'm also a musician, so there was something that when we were putting this together, I was like, you know a staccato note? A staccato note is a short-lived note. The definition of the word staccato is each note is sharply detached from the others. So many times in life, we have these fleeting, come and go, sharply detached moments of peace that honestly, they don't sustain you. They don't really get you through tough seasons. So I asked my boy Jesse to come out. Can you guys give Jesse a hand? Such a blessing. Hope City Worship, man. You are so needed and so necessary. You know, maybe you don't realize this, and I want to challenge you. Don't be late for worship. Some of y'all are like, I don't know. I'll just be late. It doesn't matter. It's just the music. No, no, no. This is where miracles break out. This is where it sets up the atmosphere for you to receive what God has for you. So Hope City Worship, next level. Get ready for new music coming. We're excited. But Jesse, uh, on the keyboard, there's a thing called a sustain pedal. But if you don't touch the pedal and you just play a single note, what does that sound like? It's, just, it's, just, it's a little disappointing. <laughs> and honestly, a lot of times, this is the way we function in life. We go through life wow. with just a moment of peace. I'm, do, I'm doing good in just a moment of peace. Uh, but I'm doing better in then just a, a moment of peace. There's reverberation and echo in the room, but it's a short-lived, fleeting staccato note doesn't really get us through the day. And the truth is, so many times, this is where we're at, just surviving life, hoping to have a moment of peace. I want you to write this down if you're taking down notes. God intended for us to live a life of sustained peace. Not a fleeting, flickering, short-lived moment of hope and peace, but a lifelong peace. A temporary moment of peace will get you through a season or two Sustained peace will get you through every season. Jesse, there's a pedal we just talked about a moment ago that if you press it, it's called a sustained pedal. Can you play just a huge chord with that sustained pedal on? Watch the difference. That sounds amazing. I feel like baby angels are gonna start. Doesn't that sound way better than just do, do a staccato moment? But this is what God says. I want a sustained moment in your life. A moment that you can build everything upon, that you can build legacy upon, that your kids can live through and your family can go through and you guys will walk out this life filled up with sustained peace. Give Jesse a hand. Come on. (laughs) Sustained peace will get us through storms in life, winds and waves. Sustained peace is not affected by seasons and situations. Sustained peace is found in God's presence This type of peace will also help you navigate life. It'll help you protect your heart. Also help you guard your mind. The Bible says in Philippians chapter four, verse seven, I was preaching in California and I don't know if he was being serious or not, but there was an older gentleman who's preached longer than I've been alive. He got up and he said, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Philippines chapter four. I was like, I love that. So taking down notes, you can turn to Philippines chapter, it's Philippians. Come on, don't, don't at me. Philippians. Chapter four says, then you will experience God's peace. That's the sustained peace we're talking about, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace, watch, will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I feel like more than ever, 2020, and more than ever, even during this holiday season, I feel like more than ever, the enemy has been trying to rob us of our peace. Can I get a, 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 can anybody agree with me? I feel like this year, more than everything, with everything going on, the noise of life, that our peace has constantly been under attack. And our hope for the holidays here at Hope City is that God would begin to unlock true peace in your life, your family's life that's sustained, something you can truly build upon. The 21 will really be your best days. I believe in Jeremiah 29, 11, I believe that this verse, This verse just, it it, it articulates what sustained peace will look like. And this is also a promise. So again, we're not just in cruise control mode. We're not just surviving life in moments of flickering and fleeting moments of peace, but sustained peace. Jeremiah 29, 11 in the Amplified says this, for I know the plans and thoughts I have for you. And that blesses me. Plans for peace, that's that sustained peace. And well-being, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Come on, say, live in my best life. Come on, I'm telling you. Sustained peace will take you through seasons of brokenness and frustration, low places and mountaintop moments, but knowing that Jesus is with you is enough. 
Because here's the truth, we've all gone through storms. 2020 was a massive storm. We all walked through it. And this next verse I reference a lot because Jesus said it so perfectly and eloquently in the area of peace. John 16, 33, Jesus said this, I have told you these things. He's literally reinforcing and encouraging us to have joy and confidence and boldness and perseverance. He said, I've told you these things so that in me you will have peace. That's that sustained peace again. Why? Because in this world, you're gonna have some troubles. How many of y'all have had some troubles? Trials and situations and storms. We have God in the middle of it, and he says, take heart. That means have courage, because I've overcome the world. And if Jesus conquered it and overcame it, guess what? Sons and daughters of the living God, you as well can overcome it. Come on, somebody give God <laughs> praise and say amen. This is the type of peace that will get you through the storm before in the middle and afterwards. Come on, look at the person next to you. If somebody's next to you and say, keep your eyes on Jesus. Come on. We have to keep our eyes on Jesus. I love this story in Matthew chapter 14. Jesus just got done preaching to the multitude, feeding the 5,000. And he said, listen, y'all are tired. I'm gonna take care of some stuff here. I'm gonna go up to the mountain and pray. Y'all get in the boat and go to the other side. I'll catch up with you later. And they were like, okay, cool. So they get in the boat and they're out. We're gonna pick this up in Matthew 14, verse 24. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind called 2020 had risen and they were fighting heavy seas. Verse 25, about three o'clock in the morning. I just, this whole story is amazing. Listen, if you're not a student of the Bible, you need to make it a priority going into 21. When I read these stories, man, it is like an action movie. Come on, there's a little romance in there. Hey, Amen. I was reading this to my son yesterday in my office. He was like, keep going, keep going. He's 11, he loved it. Watch this, at three in the morning, Jesus came walking towards them, just walking on the water. Jesus said, y'all go to the other side. I'm gonna go up to the mountain and pray, and I'll meet with you later. They didn't realize that Jesus would just be like, just walking across. This is amazing. They're in the middle of a storm, like what's going on? Watch this. Verse 26, when the disciples saw him, Walking on the water, they were terrified in fear, and they cried out, it's a ghost. They didn't know. So all the disciples are cowering. And then watch this. I love this sustained peace moment. The sustained peace moment that gives us a, a confidence and an expectation in God. And watch what Jesus said. He says this. Don't be afraid. Take courage. Why? Because I am here. Y'all, before, in the middle, and after every storm, he is here, and he is with you, and he is fighting for you. You don't have to take this on your own. You don't have to try to fight this on your own. you got a big God who's big enough to handle anything in your life, any marriage issue, any family issue, any addiction issue. He's big enough. I love that. I am here. Verse 28, Peter said, Lord, if it's really you. Everybody else was cowering, and Peter has a past, so he's like, if it's you, then ask me to come out on the water. Peter, the only other documented man in the Bible ever, he stepped out of the boat. Jesus said, yes, come, Peter, let's go. So Peter steps out of the boat and begins to walk towards him, and he was doing good. He was just hanging out on the water, and it says that he got distracted by the strong winds and waves. He got distracted by his bank account. He got distracted by that diagnosis issue. He got distracted by that struggle and that concern and that thing that tried to creep back in in your moments of isolation. He got caught up again in life scenarios and the situations that were squeezing him. And what happened? He began to sink. As long as we keep our eyes on Jesus, I'm telling you, we can get through any storm. But watch this. This blesses me. 31, Jesus immediately. Jesus could have said, oh, Peter. <laughs> he didn't do that. It says immediately he reached in and what? He grabbed him. Y'all, in your lowest, most messy, broken, ratchet place, Jesus will reach in and pull you up out and grab you because his mercy and his grace is strong enough to heal even the hardest heart. I believe it. And I believe we can apply this to our own lives. I think for some of us this year, we were doing pretty good. We we're kind of getting through life, okay? We had our bumps and we had our roller coaster moments. And then we got distracted by the storm. We got distracted by the noise, the unrest, the chaos that we were experiencing. And a lot of us took our eyes off of Jesus. But I love that he will reach in and he will rescue us. We've said this all year long. The answer always starts with 
It always ends with Jesus. Come on, look at the person next to you and say, depend on Jesus. Come on. I pray y'all are catching this. This sustained peace is not a peace that the world can give, and it's not a peace that the world can take away. Even in the toughest situations, I believe he's there. Would you close your eyes just for a moment? Jesus, I'm asking you to meet us here today, here, our, our Katie location at home. God, I thank you that you restore broken hearts. I feel God in this moment, that you heal and restore broken relationships and broken dreams. You're our peace in the middle of an addiction. You're the peace in the middle of a broken marriage, in, in the middle of a broken family. You're the peace in the middle of that diagnosis I mentioned a moment ago. You're the peace in the middle of that financial crisis. And our hope for the holidays, our faith uniting together, God, is that people would receive their breakthrough, that people would receive their deliverance, that they would receive that sustaining grace and love in their marriage and their families, that they would receive healing in their physical body. I pray, God, that you would sustain us through every storm, every season, every situation, and every obstacle. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, somebody. I just felt, I just felt like I wanted to pray for a moment. He is the Prince of Peace. Sustained peace is built upon, we've been saying this, the foundation of Jesus. It's a rock. The Bible refers to it as the rock, unchanging, immovable, never wavering cornerstone. That's why Jesus said it's, it comes from me. It's not something that the world can give because when we rely on what the world says is peace, the Bible refers to it as a foundation of sand, easily movable, always temperamental, fleeting and inconsistent. Matthew 7, verse 24 26 is, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, this is the word of God, and puts them into practice, is like the wise man who built his house upon the rock. The rain came, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, but watch, it did not fall. Why? Because it had been built upon the foundation of the rock. I'm telling you, there's sustained peace in this moment. But verse 26 says this, it starts the same, but everyone who hears these words of mine, okay, and does not listen to them is like the foolish man. Don't be like that guy who built his house upon the sand. The same storms came, the same winds rose, and the house fell. And I want to give you three ways, three foundational ways to live a life of sustained peace, to really build your foundation upon the rock as we close out 2020 and enter in to 21. Are y'all ready to take down notes? I know some of y'all have been like, I've been writing. You like borrowed somebody's eyeliner. It's okay. Write it down. Type it in your phone. Here we go. Number one, three foundational ways to live a life of sustained peace. Number one, to live in peace is to walk in faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. And the importance of walking in faith is understanding that faith is a journey. And we have to not only have faith, in order to have this sustained peace, but we also have to have trust in God because faith and trust is our love response ultimately to the one who watches over us and knows exactly what you need. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 says this, trust in the Lord with how much? All of your heart and lean not on your own, lean not on your own understanding. I think that that's where we start having temporary fleeting moments of peace. But in all your ways, what do we need to do? We need to acknowledge him redirect our attention, fix our eyes on him, and he will make our path straight. We find this sustained peace when we walk in faith because faith also requires us, this is hard for a lot of us, to relinquish control, release the burden, place our confidence and expectation in Christ and not ourselves. So I got good news, y'all. The pressure is off of our shoulders. The pressure is off of us when we realize we can't fix it, we can't restore it. We can't deliver it. We can't perfect it ourselves, even level up. All depends upon God. Write this down, Isaiah 26, verse three. The Lord gives perfect peace to those whose faith is firm. To have firm faith is to fix it on the rock. To have sustained peace is to build it upon the rock. I'm gonna have my friend Lemuel Young come up here, and I want him to share a story of faith that him and his wife, Joanna, walked through. Give Lem a hand. Come on, y'all awake this morning. <laughs> Lemuel, you're a blessing. Uh, Lemuel and Joanna are both a, a tremendous blessing to our staff at Hope City. And uh, we also discovered this past couple weeks 
that you're also, you also could go to Japan and be a professional ping pong player. So I thought I was pretty good. Like I walked in like, I got my own ping pong paddle and then I forgot it. And then he pulled out a, a, a professional ping pong paddle that's like weighted. And y'all, this guy on the ping pong table has moves like Jagger. Like it was like playing against a waterbed. He was so smooth. He was just like, like it was all slow motion. He put back spins on it. I couldn't keep up. And you ended up the champion of the entire Hope City staff. Give that, him a hand for that. Some of y'all are like, I have no idea how that ties into faith. Because I have faith that I'm going to beat you next year. All right. No, so January this year, there was a massive first for you and Joanna. Y'all were excited. I remember you begin to tell everybody, we're pregnant. That's awesome. It was amazing. Y'all clap. Y'all with us? But I remember just a few months into it, we got a phone call that said, hey, the doctors are concerned by what the ultrasound is saying. And I remember... You were, you were intentional in your, your speech, but I also heard faith in your speech. You were still speaking. Job twenty two twenty eight says, I'll decree a thing and it shall be established. I still heard faith mixed into the realization that, hey, we're walking through this. So two loaded questions to help us today. How did you keep your faith and how did you hold on to your peace? So obviously as new parents, we were, when we heard the report of our daughter, we went to our car after that and, and just wept. Yeah. And I remember one of our first prayers was, God, as much as we love our daughter, we know that you love her much more. And so we just trusted God that, that she's his daughter. Yeah. And I remember you telling us that. You said, listen, jo Joanna and I have faith, but we also recognize that our baby is, is his daughter first. And I remember you guys stayed focused and you stayed intentional and you stayed in the word and you actually started getting some good reports. And then just like that, it's like the enemy tried to rob you of your joy again and you got another negative report. So again, you kept your faith, you kept focused on the Lord, but how did you really hold on to that peace that has sustained you guys through this year? Yeah, so through the ups and the downs, I remember a specific down, if you will. Uh, we were in our living room and we just couldn't do anything but lift our hands and, and just worship God. God, we love you. God, we honor you. But the other thing we did was, was text people like you and Jackie and some of the the closest people to us because we needed a shoulder to, to lean on. Had we not had that, I don't know what we would have done. Yeah, you told me on the phone, you were like, man, if it wasn't for our group, mm. because here's the truth. When Joanna and Lem's faith was depleted, there were people that came around them and said, hey, our faith will lift your arms. Our faith will stand with you in the middle of this storm, in the middle of this situation. Because the truth is we need others. We're better together. You want to sustain peace in your life, these moments that we go through, because again, they were walking through it. They were squeezed. And I remember when we talked, like there's two options. You can panic or you can pray. You can panic or you can praise. And I love that you just said that you guys stood and worshiped in the living room when no one saw you. So then August, September came. So give, it, give us like, give us the finale of this, because we're, we're in December. So we... Uh it was kind of ups and downs, but finally, October rolled around. October 15th, 2020, Lennon Chandler Young was born. Come on, on y'all. Healthy Thank baby you. girl. Come on. Amazing. Give Lem a hand. Seriously. Had faith in the middle of it. In Mark chapter 2, there's this moment where this paraplegic is laying on a mat, and these brothers walk by, these dudes walk by, and we don't know theologically if these guys were friends, close friends, BFFs, Facebook friends, if they didn't know them at all. This guy's laying there and has no chance to ever get near Jesus, and this guy's like, hey, did you know that Jesus is doing a connect group right around the corner? That's the message translation. <laughs> so, you know, Jesus is, this man they call Jesus who heals people is right over here, and this guy's like, I can't move. These four men grabbed each corner of the mat, and they took him where Jesus was, and they tried to go in the front door. It was too busy. They tried to go in the back door. It was too packed. They thought, why don't we go through the window? Three attempts. They could have just set him down and said, sorry, man, we got to catch a movie. But instead, they said, hey, how about this? How about we go on top of the roof? Like, y'all, that took some faith to get up on the top of this house and begin to break through the tiles over in that part of the world, the tiles are six, seven, eight inches thick. They had to have caused a lot of noise while Jesus was in there like, and then the Lord said, like Jesus is in there healing people and people are being set free. And all of a sudden, boom, they lower this man. And it's the only document in time in the word that Jesus looks at these men and looks at this man, 
this man that's the paraplegic, and he said, it's the faith of your friends. It was the audacious faith of these men that said, when you're weak and you're depleted, we've got your back, which brings me to point number two. To live in peace, we have to pursue connection. To live in peace, we have to pursue connection. I love what Lem said a moment ago, that he said, even though we were walking through the storm, we were walking through the chaos in our life, we had, a, we had a, a group, we had people surrounding us, Jackie and me, Pastors Jeremy and Miss Jennifer that said, hey, keep on standing. And when you feel like you can't stand anymore, we've got you. That's why I said in a moment ago at Hope City, we believe that life moves at the speed of relationships. There's a quote that says, if you wanna go somewhere fast, go alone. If you wanna go somewhere far, go together. We believe we're better together. In February of 21, say February 21, the very first weekend of February, we're kicking off connect groups. How many of y'all were a part of last semester's connect groups? Come on. How many of you guys have never been a part of a connect group? I'm telling you, it is the life force of our church. We had a girl in our group that was going through surgery, and man, our group rallied, bought DoorDash cards and gift cards, and we were there, delivered it, and said, hey, whatever you need, let us know, because we truly believe we're a family. So prepare your heart to jump in and be a part of a connect group. We're better together. Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine and 12, I believe encapsulates this. Verse 10, two can accomplish more than twice as much as one. For the results can be much better. If one falls, the other pulls him up. But if a man falls when he's all alone, he's in trouble. And this is where verse 11 gets a little dicey. It says, also, on a cold night, two under the same blanket gain warmth from each other. Now, I need you to not take this out of context. As much single people, as like, Pastor Daniel said that I have a mission to cuddle with people. <laughs> Listen, we're gonna copy and paste verse 11 for the relationship series next year. But for today, we're gonna skip it just for a moment. Verse 12, and one standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three is even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. We need each other. If you want sustained peace in your life, you need to pursue connection. Look at the person next to you and say, you got a friend in me. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Y'all sound great. All right, stop singing. Okay, here we go. Last one, number three, to live in peace is to look from a different angle. It's a little different. Walk in faith. Pursue connection. The last one is to live in peace. We have to look from a different angle. I feel like so many times we end up here. We end up so self-consumed and so focused on where we're at that we can't see past ourselves and see others. We end up here full of emptiness and discontent because I thought I'd be further along by now. I thought I'd have more money. My money's funny and non-existent, right? I thought the situation would be different. I thought I would have accomplished way more. I thought I'd be married by now or walk through a divorce or a second divorce. And we end up getting in this me, myself, and I sort of trap. God never called us to be this self-consumed. He never called us to be this self-focused where we don't see people, where we don't see what others are going through. I asked the Lord this year, God, let me see people through the filter of the way you see them. The truth is, I gotta get out of the way because I don't wanna judge somebody based upon the chapter of their life that I walked in on because I'm consumed by my own issues myself. And I believe that as we go into 21, I believe that as we lock, unlock sustained peace in our life, I believe God wants us to turn and look from a, a different angle. I believe God wants us to look past ourselves and say, I see her. I can help that family. I, I, can, I can serve in that outreach at Hope City. I can sow into that project. I can stand and lift Pastor Jeremy's arms with faith, knowing that the silos is gonna reach millions of people around the world. We look past ourselves, and we see what God is asking us to do. What's your plan? What's your purpose? What's your destiny? What's your call? Because here's the truth. There are people's lives attached to it. And if we're so consumed by ourselves, we won't recognize that healing is in our hands. We, we won't recognize that, 
the blessings and the money that God's asked us to be good stewards of, maybe God is saying, hey, I'll bless you with more, but I need you to live open-handed, and I just want to pass through this increase to others, and I'll always replace it because you're willing to sow and willing to give and willing to go beyond yourself. Again, God never asked us to carry all of this weight and all of these burdens and to be so consumed here, but y'all, that's the world we live in now. Everything is filters and polishes and everything is like, I don't like that angle. I need you to take it again. Well, it's been the 40th picture and your bangs are fine. Bangs are fine. And the truth is God can't use who you pretend to be. So I say we put down the mirror. I say we put down the filters and I say we start looking at people the way God asked us to look at them and start being willing to say yes and get our yes out of the way so that we can see others and not ourselves. Give our team a hand. Come on. We have to look from a different angle. Mark chapter 12, verse 30 says it this way, and you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength. And the second is equally as important. What is it? Love your neighbor as yourself. See, when you receive that love, When you forgive yourself and you lay down that shame and guilt and condemnation, you can literally, out of the overflow of the love you've received, truly love others. 1 John 4, 11 says, Dear friends, since God loved us this much, we need to love each other. My wife came to me and she said, Hey, you always preach Colossians 3, 17. It's an anthem in our home that everything we do and say We do it as a representative of Jesus. I'm not doing this all perfect just yet because I'm still dealing with Houston drivers. I had a lady the other day, she pulled out in front of me, gave me the Houston thumbs up with the wrong finger. I'm like, how was that my fault? And I'm sanctified, but I felt Tabasco sauce coming up my legs. I'm like pushing a little hard jack. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, I got to rear end this lady. I got to run into this lady. That's what they do. That's why cars are made of Nerf here. Now, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 has become an anthem on our family that everything we do and say, we need to do it as a representative of Jesus. And if we mess up, we got tomorrow. And we're going to keep striving in the grace and the mercy that he's entrusted us with and he so saved us with to reflect hope to others. So my wife came to me and said, babe, I found an organization that helps provide Christmas for abused and hurting kids that honestly, without people coming alongside and sewing these toys, these kids won't have Christmas So she came to our kids and our two older ones are 11 and 10 and our little ones are four and one and a half. And she's like, I I want, I want them to pick a name. I want them to pick the age. And so we did it. We bought some gifts and my little boy Brecken, who's 11 said, Hey, I've got a gift card to target. Can I sew this? That blessed me as a dad. And my wife's looking at me like, that's me. That's my leadership. (laughs) So, you know, that's me. And then my 10 year old, she's like, I've got some extra birthday cash. Can I sew it? And my four-year-old and my one-and-a-half-year-old were stealing the gift cards and the cash. And I'm like, Lord, they're not ready yet. That's that sin nature. They're not ready yet. They're just, and they're just trying to... Oh. We went to the organization to drop off the gifts, and each tag had a kid's name. And we prayed for those kids that God would heal their hearts, that he would put stitches where there's been Band-Aids, that he would rescue them out of that brokenness. We sat in that car, and we prayed over those toys, and we anointed those toys, and we cried... And it showed our kids that this really is the reason for the season, to show people that Jesus loves them no matter where they're at. Are you representing Jesus that way? Are you reflecting the hope of Christ to others? Are you only showing up and getting filled up for hope for the holidays and grabbing a hold of hope and sustained peace and then not passing it on? I believe as we end out this year, as we go into 21, More than ever, I believe there are people that are rising up as the redeemed of the Lord that says, I will say yes. I will get in the way of someone's storm. I will romance somebody to Jesus and do whatever it takes to represent him. I I was really excited yesterday. Our outreach director sent me a text and said, this is what we've done as a church. Somebody needs to get ready to clap and shout. We've given away over 4,000 toys to local Houston kids here in Houston. 
We've given away over 3,000 toys to Lake Charles, 500 families for people that were devastated by the hurricanes. We've given away over 600 bikes during this Hope for the Holiday season, and we gave 8,000 cookies to prisoners last week. I'm telling you, God is doing amazing things, and we're simply just wanting to be used by Him to be a willing vessel. You know, if you're here today, then you say, Daniel, man, I needed this sustained peace. The truth is, it's been a staccato, fleeting, short, temporary moment of peace, but I feel like God is beginning to unlock sustained peace in my life. Again, it's connected to our walk in faith. It's connected to us pursuing connections. It's connected to choosing that forgiveness and laying down things that we struggle with and forgiving others. And the last one is looking from a different angle, getting past ourselves and looking at others first. If you're here today, you can close your eyes for a moment. I'm bringing this in for a landing. Y'all still have time to beat the Methodist to the Sizzler or barbecue. Amen. Amen. <laughs> If you're here today, or maybe you're in our Katy location, or maybe you're watching online, and you said, Daniel, wow, I I've been living these temporary moments of peace, a lot of them that I tried to create, a lot of them that I tried to figure out and fix on my own, but the truth is, I need sustained peace, and I'm, I've heard today through the word, and God began to stir in my heart that it's connected to Jesus, and I don't know him. Maybe you're in this room at Katie, watching online, watching the replay. Maybe somebody shared this post and you said, I don't know Jesus is my savior, but today is my day. Today's the day on the 20th of December, 2020, that everything changes for me. I'm sick and tired of just getting through life. Maybe you're the other invitation and you say, I used to know him, but I fell away. I got caught up in the prodigal life, but today's my day that I wanna rededicate my life to Jesus. Here at Hope City, we don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons. We believe Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 is true. That says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. I'm looking all over the room. Our leaders at Katie are looking. If you're home, you can, you can just type, this is for me, or you're talking to me, or yes. If you want to give your life to Jesus today, will you lift your hand? I'm looking all over the room right now. Hands are going up everywhere. Hand, 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 hand hand, hand, all the way in the back. I know it's happening at Katy too, and you're watching at home. You can put your hands down. We're gonna pray. Hope City Worship, our entire creative team, everybody watching, pray this prayer along with heaven. Say this with me. Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me, and it's not working. I've just been surviving life. I lay every mistake, every sin, all my struggles at your feet. Thank you for saving me giving me sustained peace, and healing me through your grace and your mercy. I confess you now as my Father, my Savior, and my Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, can we give? Now, come on, can we give God praise for every person that just surrendered their life?